We've zoomed into a mountain range in Indonesia. The Grasberg mine is the largest mine for gold and the third largest for copper. The waste is let into the rivers. And if we go to the south, what we're going to see is the tailings building up. Massive tailings um, destroying forest land. This is water you would not want to drink. We're rendering visible something that humans have been doing to the planet which we may not have realized because we think the world is too big for us to affect. And we start to realize the world is actually quite small and we have a big effect. The Amazon River, which we've all discussed and concerned ourselves with, is here. And we talk about deforestation on the Amazon being highly problematic and so on. But then take a look at where this is. It's the fringe. It's the outside edge, not along the river, that's being taken for soy production at massive scales over the last number of years. You start to see where this has occurred, and you start to also see where the edges are. And these are protected areas for indigenous people. So the native peoples have moved into the forest to get away from this edge. But without the protection and without boundaries, the, the human development has a habit of spreading and it's really important for us to look at our future of our cities. And you can see in 1984, we have Dallas on the right, Fort Worth on the left. And let's play forward in time to 2015. Dallas and Fort Worth grow in every direction, but especially, especially here in the north, where we can see farmland being replaced by, by suburbs, very low density suburbs. This causes intense pressure on the mobility, as you can imagine, highways and so on with this kind of land use pattern. You can actually jump and see the development of fracking, the natural gas extraction near Dallas. Look at this territory. Since they discovered how to explode a shale horizontally and extract gas. And watch for the little tiny square white, white rectangles there. These are all hydraulic fracturing pads. These are drilling places. We explode the shale, extract gas, all those dots. If we see what we've done to the planet in order to get resources, we realize if we could use them again, we can double the amount of resources without doubling the amount of damage on the planet. In the 32 years that we record, Seoul increased in population by almost a factor of two. But if you watch, it doesn't look like Dallas-Fort Worth at all. You see almost no horizontal expansion. Instead. Seoul had a policy of densification to increase population in place, so Seoul built up instead of out. This is a really critical idea. It obviously makes the mobility more effective. It creates communities that are more interactive, but it also allows the agriculture on the periphery to be maintained. This is an important idea for so many reasons, one of which I think one of the biggest moves I'd like to see in urbanism is what I call the carbon positive city where instead of just saying we have a liability of, of atmospheric carbon, which we're reducing, if all we tell people is what we're not going to do, we're gonna reduce our carbon by 20% by 2020, you're telling the children what you're not going to do. That's like getting in a taxi and saying, quick, I'm not going to the airport. And as we look at the fourth industrial revolution, AI, machines talking to machines, the question becomes a question of values, a question of relationships, the local, the global. But it, underlying it all must be a notion of resources where with circular economy and cradle-to-cradle -cradle design, we see that we put the re back into resources. We've seen that China has almost doubled its production of electricity from solar just in the past year. What you're seeing here is a set of solar photovoltaic electricity generation that's more than 20 kilometers from north to south. We see these sorts of things springing up all over the globe. What is very interesting in Inner Mongolia, they're doing an experiment which we're part of, which we're excited about. If you take the solar collectors and face them this way, so they can rock into the morning and rock into the evening, we get four times as much energy. We lift them up above human head, and they rock into the morning, they rock into the afternoon. They move a shadow from here to there every day, and animals can graze under it, but all the grasses, native grasses, come back. So it's as if it's a solar orchard but all the animals can graze, the roots come back, the soil holds water, the carbon is sequestering, it actually becomes a positive carbon sequestration with water and air purification, providing jobs, high-tech jobs, in rural areas near cities where people can get real jobs, being in the countryside, working, growing food. We can make technologies that don't just reduce human negative impact, but start to increase human positive impact. 
So by redesigning, we move from reduce, reuse, recycle, which is nice but inadequate, to redesign, renew, and regenerate and restore.